play cards but not do yeah. anything. Experimental Frenzy, you don't play cards from your hand, and you play them, you have an endless stream from the top, so it's perfect. Yes, the perfect answer. It's just a per and, and oh. the Experimental Affinity deck plays three copies of Experimental Frenzy in the main deck. So Alan Weil probably has his hands full here with 8-Rack, but let's see how it pans out. You want to know what's the saddest part about this matchup? See, what's that? The 8-Rack player wants to play a critical mass of discard spells. Like Raven's Crime? Oh, no. Oh, whoa, no. Maybe he has an extra one. Oh, there's this not, looks like a mulligan. No. This yeah. is a mulligan to five or something, right? Yeah, Maybe there's not four? many. Yeah, and there weren't many lands, so it makes sense to discard it. But Wrench Mine is a pretty bad card against Affinity. It usually. is, yes. Yes, it is. It's good against the rest of the field. But yeah, I think here... You know, all told, this isn't the worst for Curtis Roberts. No, that Cranial Plating can deal a ton of damage. Yeah. And we know that 8-Rack can really spend its time kind of dirtling around. We're probably going to see... Is that Stupor in hand? That is Stupor. Uh -huh. I, I can't remember the order. I believe it's discard a card and then at random, or is it at random first? I believe it's discard a card and... Random first, then apparently, random? is the confirmation. Oh. Okay, it's the way you want it. <laughs> I prefer they choose first and then random, because that way you maximize the chances of getting a good card. Sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the best way if it you're is. the Stupor no, player. You're right. But yeah, here, because Alan did not play the Raven's Crime, probably needing to play a removal spell in that dismember, mm -hmm. Curtis got to, to play the Arcbound Ravager plus the Mox Opal, which allows Curtis to just deploy the hand and put on the maximum amount of pressure. Stupor this. No cards in hand. Uh, this so matchup doesn't tend to be very good for 8-Rack, just because Affinity dumps its hand fast, so it's hard to get value from your discard spells. Uh, the cards are cheap. Ensnaring Bridge doesn't really stop Affinity because they have a bunch of zero mana creatures, so you can attack and then re-equip Cranial Plating. Right, or Signal Pest does stuff, yeah. Just, yeah. Shrieking Affliction, though, going to start presenting a clock on Curtis. Essentially, Curtis is going to take free damage if there is only one or zero cards in hand. And with Raven's Crime, it's essentially Curtis takes free damage on every upkeep. Or, or rather than free damage, I apologize. It's lose free life. Don't try to board in worship against Shrieking Affliction. Right. <laughs> but Eduardo said so. Specifically said not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here, equipping the plating, trading with Alan's Blink Moth Nexus. Normally these eight... That fine. Yeah, but interestingly, the I find the Aidrak decks usually play the card uh, Mutavolt over Blink Moth Nexus, so that was an interesting inclusion. Probably a flyer to answer something like an Arc Light Phoenix for a turn or a key flyer. Interesting, uh, basic mountain out of the hand here for Curtis Roberts. And Alan, I believe, drew an Assassin's Trophy? Oh, well, that, that's unfortunate then to draw the mountain. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's see if that's what he actually drew, though. I didn't get a perfect look at it, but oh, yeah, it does seem to be the case. Yeah. So he's going to take care of the cranial plating here. This presents uh, an interesting proposition for Curtis. Obviously, you just you sacrifice it since you're not going to get a basic land. But what else do you sacrifice? <coughs> Apparently, the Mox Opal. And so he's just not all all in on this Ravager, but he's getting there. And a removal spell from Alan Weil would do quite. Oh, there's his other basic. <laughs> just drew the other basic. The last two turns, he went basic, basic. There's the rag. That's there's six damage rack. a turn. Yeah, that does add up quickly, though there's still two Darksteel Citadels there as well for Robert. I mean, I mean, it comes down to essentially Curtis is going to, barring some crazy draw, going to sacrifice both Citadels yep. on Ravager, present a two-turn clock, Say and I'll hope it's good enough. Say I'll kill you next turn, yeah. Wait, sorry, what? Frogmite? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? Frogmite? I guess he's glad he kept those Citadels around. <laughs> Wait, it's not, it's not 2002, is it? I don't think so. It might be. Frog yeah. might. I'm a bit surprised and that Curtis was... didn't uh, sacrifice a Citadel here uh, just to present one more damage. But yeah, here it... takes it down. Wow. All right. Frog might for the win, although it didn't actually attack or block at any point. Here it's always is... Arbound Ra Ravager for yeah. the win. That was actually, that ended up being fairly close, though. Yes. Right? I mean, that was not. This is an a easy blowout. Ravager since this hand does almost nothing without it. Right. Plays a couple of underpowered creatures. Land off the top for Curtis Roberts as well, so his draw. Underpowered creatures. This is free damage on turn two. Okay. By free creatures. Okay. One-powered creatures. feel like Alan can deal with it. 
but we'll see. There's a lot of cards that are not exactly at their best against Affinity in Alan's deck, in, in Liliana of the Veil and Wrench Mine. But you get to sideboard in some Collective Brutalities, bl uh, Bio Blights, Fall Meteor Mages, and Bantu's Last Reckoning. Chat points out, by the way, that cards like Frog might might be better in this particular uh, Frenzy build because they are more free cards off the top of the library. Right. You you just want to play. You you want to make sure you can play your cards as quickly as possible. That said, I find if you already have four mana in play and you're stuck because you've played two powerful two drops in your deck and that's why you don't have mana, I think that's okay. If your turn was Arcbound Ravager, Cranial Planing, and then you're like, oh, I can't play this other two drop, I think that's fine. You don't need too many cards. I don't think Frogmite is actually that bad in Affinity anyways, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice, like, it's, it's just a nice free creature, but a little later down the, the line. That looks like a Master Invention, I believe, in Curtis's hand. Okay. I'm trying to find what that invention is. My invention game isn't quite on par. This is what it looks like. I might be incorrect. That's Bile Blight. Yes, it is. As long as we don't activate the second <laughs> Blink Bomb Nexus, it's right, fine. Right, let's just keep that one at home. Yeah. We did see Oh, Ornithopter, the best invention. Super Ornithopter. Yeah, Alan's hand Masterpiece. is just more removal spells. There's certainly nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah, I mean, this is a type of uh, draw that, that lines up well against... Or poorly oh. against a bunch of removal spells. Okay, looking at Alan's hand, there's a Bantu's Last Reckoning, and I think Alan was just trying to consider, is this the time to fire it off? But with Curtis at one card, I think this is definitely the time to go for it. Yeah, that makes sense. So Bantu's Last Reckoning is going to sweep the board and leave just the Ink Moth Nex or Blink Moth Nexus back as an attacker. But with Alan at a cool 15 life, he's looking good here. Yeah, as long as Alan finds a... Uh, actually, anything. Fret... Um, removal. Well, he's got four or five spells in his hand, apparently, so <laughs> not bad. Ooh, what is this? A Ravager? No, it's a Steel Overseer. Yeah, missing an artifact here? Actually, yeah, the, I, I don't think there was a way to attack with Blink Moth Nexus. I mean, you could animate it, but then you're still at two artifacts, so you can't use the Mox Opal anyway, so you have to tap it. Yeah, so he'd rather just get the Steel Overseer down, which is what he does, but... Before it can even get activated, one of those many removal spells that we mentioned before, Assassin's Trophy, is going to take care of it. You want to know what card Curtis wants more than anything here? Experimental Frenzy. Good guess. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got the land for it, too. So. Now, the Opal not active yeah. by kind of a lot. He needs a whole other artifact plus to activate that Blink Moth, but still. I mean, I think Curtis has access to... Basically any colored spell. You can always animate the Blink Moth Nexus and then the Spire of Industry works. Mm -hmm. And there's also already a Plains and a Mountain. But but not Frenzy, right? Does, does he... One, two, three... Oh, he has Fren a Basic Fren Mountain. All yeah, right, yeah. that's easy. <laughs> I always assume that they need the Opal for every colored spell for some reason. At any rate, in goes the uh, the whole entire team, which is a Blink Moth Nexus this time. Go team. Yeah. Go team Nexus. Ooh, how about this? Ancient Stirrings off the top of the library. Perhaps find... We'll find Alan Wild one of his win conditions and get that ball rolling. Another deck with stirrings. Ins he found an ensnaring bridge, Eduardo. Yeah, I... Looks pretty bad here. I, although, whatever, if the situation is I'm going to take one damage a turn, he's probably fine by that anyway. Yeah, ensnaring bridge is not the most efficient card against Affinity. But that said, Alan has access to a lot of cards in, you know, Assassin's Trophy, uh, Maelstrom Pulse, ways to deal with cranial plating. Since that would be the biggest risk, having a zero power creature get in and then uh, equip an instant speed. Curtis not playing the card from hand is interesting. So I wonder what kind of instant speed interaction it is. Yeah. Alan's hand has a death shadow. What? Yes. Tech against aggro. Rack shadow? I, I don't even know where we are. Shadow anymore. rack? Sh shadow bridge. <laughs> <laughs> He has Ensnaring Bridge and Death Shadow? <laughs> what is happening? What? Well, um... I don't know anymore. I don't know what life is. He has I only know what Death Shadow is. <laughs> what is going on? I'm pretty sure I it's a Death Shadow. Alan is he playing the card He has two in his board. Yeah. The, I really want to see him go Ensnaring Bridge in the next turn play like a Death Shadow. 
Although right now the Death Shadow could actually do something. It's only a 1-1. One -one. It'd be good enough. Yeah. Yeah, then you'll see Curtis attack to grow the Death Shadow large enough yeah. so it can't attack through and Snaring Bridge. Exactly. And then Curtis will destroy once both Death Shadows and employ his own Ensnaring Bridge to attack for lethal. Okay. That's the plan. I like that plan. Put their guard down. I want to no, see no, it. I don't I know if I like it. I want to see it. No, I like it. Yeah. I like it, Marshall. I'm committing to this line. Although Assassin's Trophy, I believe, has to be a permanent and opponent control, so you got to save the Maelstrom Pulse. That's true. You're right. There it is. Death, Death Shadow and Snaring Bridge combo assembled. Oh, boy. So am I. It's a little early for this. No, this is the perfect time. <sighs> what is even happening? Curtis probably is wondering what's going on. This is, I am. <laughs> this is just not a combination of cards you'd expect no, to see. No, we needed uh, this to destroy our bridge. He used the Maelstrom Pulse on the Vault Scourge. Curses. Uh, well, I guess he'll have to find a different line. All told, he's still looking fine. He's still just been taking one damage per turn. For the last three or four turns, there's an Ink Moth, but that doesn't look like it's going to be able to do much either. It's so. fine. We can go for the ultimate win Ooh, after over Liliana? 10 turns. Does Liliana? that do anything? Well, the end of the Veil. Yeah. Well. He's empty-handed, so it's might as empty, well. Empty-handed is what does a lot here. It was a redundant Mox Opal, by the way. Yeah. But, yeah, the empty-handed is the part that's very important here. Because now he's taking no damage, nor is Liliana getting attacked. Yeah, that's exactly this it. This is actually kind of a remarkable number of permanents for Affinity to have out that aren't creatures. He's now got seven lands on the battlefield somehow. Well, you don't see that very often from Affinity. Yeah, well, uh, between the Assassin's Trophy and this draw, I mean, this is a Never Nexus, right? Oh, Frogmite. <laughs> he had to pay one for it. What a crime. It's okay. We have Death Shadow and Snaring Bridge holding defense. That's right. <laughs> I mean, Alan is going to tick up Liliana when he gets to seven. Uh, Ult ultimate and then start ticking up again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that line. Been there, done that. Doesn't Another land. land off the top. Plus again. Def definitely add a counter. There, there's no rush. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We could see a Lil we could see Liliana ultimate twice. Arcbound Ravager would be a problem with a zero mana artifact. Uh, sorry, zero, zero power, power flyer. artifact. Yeah, but it's really just not here, right? Yeah, it doesn't really do much. There's Raven's Crime. Right, so that can just go to the bin anyway. Actually, Alan could have kept the Raven's Crime here, except that you don't want a card with Ensnaring Bridge. Yeah, you just don't want it in your hand, so he just casts it. I mean, taking up the Liliana here is fine. You can just wait until there's a problematic permanence. So the plan from Alan is just wait until something problematic comes and then separate that problematic permanent with the others and you can essentially Liliana... Like try, try to set... Oh, there we go. There's a rack. But I mean, but it's Curtis's choice, right? So... Right, but if, you're, if the choice is keep Experimental Frenzy or none of your other cards... Then you give him that choice. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, still over here. Not exactly not the best it. card against Incinerating Bridge. Yeah, interesting that the uh, you know the the better the card, uh, traditionally speaking at this point, is is actually the worse the card. Also, <laughs> Ornithopter is a, a gem yes. of Magic's oh, history, and oh. I will not have you insult Ornithopter as See, a bad card. See, that would be <laughs> the bad card that he wants. <laughs> it, it, air, air Ornithopter quotes, air quotes is bad far from a bad card. Yeah, here it's it great. is a key component of the war between Urza and Mishra. Oh no, <laughs> we've come to this point, have we, Eduardo? It's gotten this. It's gotten here. <laughs> Well, the rack also comes from that era, right? I guess. There's Blink Moth. I'm sure someone in the chat will correct me. My, I have to get better at, you know, the, the magic lore. lore or whatever. Yeah, you exactly. really don't. You're, you're good at what you do. Just stay in your lane, you know? <laughs> stay in my lane. Yeah. But the flavor, Marshall. The flavor. I, see, I don't need this. I get this enough on the podcast. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Well, he's just going to go ahead and fire off an ultimate here. Oh, cool. Something, something is happening. Something's happening, yeah. So to, to be fair, I mean, Alan could just plus it or minus six it. We, we're, we're just getting to the stage of the game where uh, Alan is just going to win with a couple of uh, the rack activations. I'm actually surprised to fire it off here since nothing Curtis is doing is very worrying rather than later. Like you, I mean, if your plan was to take Lillian up this high, you might as well wait. If you're worried about something like Galvanic Blast as well, which might be Curtis's uh, concern, then by doing Liliana now, you're giving Curtis a chance to draw Galvanic Blast and lose Liliana the Veil. So I think there it makes sense to maybe wait. If you were patient this long, of course. And, of course, what's happening here with the Ultimate is that Liliana of the Veil says that Alan gets to create two piles. 
Curtis will choose one. That one's going to get sacrificed, put into his graveyard, and he'll get to keep the rest. Now, that's pretty good here. I mean, honestly, like, Curtis, he's going to lose some number of problematic permanents from Allen's side. The lands are kind of whatever at this point. I'm the only, the only card I care about really, really is that Arcbound Ravager, right? Like, that's yeah. a thing that could lead to you losing. Yeah. Honestly, well... Arcbound Ravager, the, the way I would structure this pile is all the uh, multicolored sources on one side and all the other cards on the other. Okay. Well, Something like that. He's given work. him kind of a mix here. He has the Arcbound Ravager, plus he also has the uh, access to the Spire of Industries down there. Oh, there's a Blink Moth Nexus as well on Alan's side. Mm. So now that's an additional point of damage since there's no Flyer on Curtis's side until that Vault Scourge comes into play. But yeah, here we're just waiting for the rack to slowly do its job. Right, and the rack is going to be the way that this game ends, right? Because Liliana of the Veil, at this point, is just functionally keeping the uh, the Instaring Bridge fully active, although at a top deck mode anyway, he can do that. Yeah, if Alan draws a card that for some reason... He, he just he, couldn't, yeah. Or doesn't want to, rather than kill it, I believe. Right. Oh, Shriek and Affliction. Okay. The so clock doubled, so we're done in two turns. So yeah, at this six, point we're, six and then six. We're probably just looking at a game free here. Yep. This is—I mean, this is actually kind of cool. Like the Death that, Shadow that, is still kind of funny, but the rest of it <laughs> was, was really <laughs> sweet. Staring Bridge Death Shadow. Yeah. yeah. That was. Um, that was a nice combo. The one-two punch—you can't recover from that. So <laughs> game number three incoming. Wow, Curtis mulligan a lot Good in this match. There was a mulligan to six last game, but it seemed like a mulligan to five in game one. Curtis has, yeah, draw, uh, five again. Curtis has not had the, the best draws. Mulliganing against the rack is also super painful. Totally. Just gets them right to where they want to be anyway. Although the only good news, of course, is, is that it does brick some of the spells. Like, he's going to need to cast a wrench mine just to get it out of his hand at some point, and it's not actually going to have an effect on the game. But well, I, I think wrench mine is the one card them. you get rid of quickly. Yes. Those are, that's the four of you lose from your deck when sideboarding. No, he has one in his hand. Wait, he has a wrench mine? No, that must be a shrieking affliction, right? No, there is one. You're right. Yeah. But why? Target opponent discards a card. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I, I'll admit I'm a little surprised. I would not keep that in either, but... I mean, Raven's Crime does the same job. Right. But it's half the cost and has... I don't know. The, to be fair, I guess the artifact clauses that come into play often... And Norm affinity. You mean normally, or...? Yeah, I mean... Against Affinity, I think it might come into play kind of often. <laughs> Yeah, slightly. Okay. <laughs> so my view is... Give it to me. Tell me. My view is Alan's going to cast the Bantu's Last Reckoning and, and deal with this nonsense. Uh, but probably you should not keep Wrench Mine against Affinity from a rack. Right. That just, that just seems uh, like a thing. All right. Well, right now, though, Alan Weil has to be pretty excited about the way that this one's played out because he's got the rack and a relatively empty board. So we are, we are in time yeah, walk. Yeah, that needs to be tapped. And, and it looks like the judge came in and do it. Um, remember, Bonti's Last Reckoning prevents your lands from untapping the next turn, so he will not be able to do anything here. Uh, it's tough. You see that all the time. All oh, the time. Doubled the clock. Draw Ooh, land. Double attack. trouble? Yeah. We're going to poison Allen out. Allen does have now he, a he has a Fulminator to help stem the bleeding here. Yes. See, that's why we have Inkmoth Nexus, to not grow the Death Shadow from Allen. There you go. So Fulminator Mage is going to need to get activated here. He's going to need to take out one of these threats. Now, the problem with it is is that with any free creature or land, Curtis Roberts would be able to fire up both of those Ooh, Nexuses, Nexuses is again. A re is really that here. was a nice draw. Yeah. Raven's Crime away, your Springleaf Drum, and then I guess he just needs to get the Wrench Mine out of his hand. No. He just, he it, it, there's no point. I mean, there's no hand, no card from Curtis. Here, here, what you do is you activate Blink Moth Nexus. Oh, actually, Blink Moth Nexus was just uh, played. You could activate it here and trade. The other thing you can do a little yeah. later down the the line was 
activate it and, and then, pump then it. yeah and it, it would survive so you couldn't activate it again though because it has the counter i see so it would survive but once yeah. you activate it again it would be over and look at that the hand gets extended after yeah. the second the rack hits the battlefield and alan weil has beaten experimental affinity a tough matchup though i will say it seemed to be uh skewed by heavy mulligans from curtis yeah curtis mulligan the five six and five Ugh. Against a deck that specifically wants to discard your yeah. hands. That is that is a rough one for You're him. You're basically giving them free spells by yeah. mulligan. I mean, the hands must have been really bad. Because when you play against... Once you know you're against um, aid rack, yeah. your mulligan decisions become a lot looser. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a commercial break. When we come back, though, Reed and Maria will be back in the, in the booth here. We'll see you after that.